Hello and welcome back to another Reefcraft video. Today we're going to be looking at Montipora again, but we missed so many last time. We're going to show you a heap of different species and a couple of extra things here and there. I had to add this little guy in, he was so cute and he would meet me after I was snorkeling. Anyway, I'm going to show you a heap of branching, scrolling, encrusting and plating Montiporas, but a heap of different species. And if you like the video, drop a comment and let me know what I should be doing on the next video. This next clip, it's not a species, but it blew my mind. Under this overhang, the water is so clear and the light reflects so well off the sand. Coral colonies like that Ceratopora, there's Montipora, Cyphastria, everything you can imagine growing underneath this ledge in what you would assume to be pure darkness, but it's light enough under there that, yeah, light gets there. And just another really cool environment to add is this Montipora growing in less than 10 centimeters of water. It is stunning, but yeah, let's get into some species. And I'm starting this video off with an absolute stunner. Check out this red Montipora capitata. And it's kind of like a Danae and a Digitata had a love child and it turned into this. You can see the bumps covering all the outside of the surface as well as the digitating branches. But they also do this plating thing underneath and you can kind of see it at the bottom of this one. They send out plates as well, but only in larger colonies and when they're a little bit deeper. Interestingly, I only find these guys in slightly deeper water. So between the 10 to 20 meters. And let me know if you've ever seen one of these before, whether in the wild or in the hobby, because from all the research I could do, they are rare and I've never really seen anything looking as nice as these. Up next, I have this massive plating Montipora foliosa. If you look around the edges of these, you can see radiating ridges that go all the way out to the edge. And the polyps and coralites actually line up in these ridges. You can see a really nice pale growth room around all the outside of this, but if you're lucky, you can actually get them where they're pink. But of course, I never have my camera when I need it. And just a quick shout out to that scorpion cod hiding in there. Montipora digitata is one of the most popular species of Montipora there is. And I find heaps of it growing in incredibly shallow waters. This water here is actually at high tide, which means that it'll basically be out of the water once the water level drops. It is an incredibly tolerant species and inhabits areas that otherwise are unsurvivable by other coral species. And you can see its adaptability here. These actually break off in storms and roll around and start new colonies in very shallow waters. Its propagation technique of snapping off and restarting colonies is really clever when you think about where it grows. It's in really shallow water and means it can take over entire areas really quickly. And if you look closely at this shot, you can actually see the shimmer in the water. That's the heat. This water is incredibly hot. It's like bath water when you're swimming around in it. And they create these monocultures. So there's hundreds and hundreds of colonies over a small area of reef. And if you look around, it's all just algae and littered corals here and there. These guys are incredibly adaptable. And they grow like this. They grow real thick and clumpy in shallower waters. And you can see this green one here is incredibly thick and chunky. And that's because it's being smashed by waves. And as a side note, if you guys keep these in your aquariums and their polyps disappear for a long period of time, check your alkalinity because it's typically out of whack when they do this. It's really difficult to differentiate branching Montipora species. But luckily, this species was growing side by side to the Digitata, which makes it a tiny bit easier. The thin pointy cream branches that you can see are from Montipora Ultercepta. And the reason you can tell the difference is because they have a flared lower lip on the Coralite that gives them this raspy, bumpy look. And you can really see it in this shot here. You can see that the texture of the coral isn't as smooth. And then you also have Montipora samarensis. And this one, I'm pretty sure is samarensis, not digitata. You can kind of see that the branches are a lot thinner, but digitata can look like this if it's growing in slightly deeper water. These Montipora species all do that same propagation by breaking. And it's really cool because they're like little ecosystem engineers where they'll break and start new colonies and you can see all the fish hiding in between them. It gives them almost like a nursery zone in the shallow water. And this shot here is a really good side-by-side -side between the Ultercepta and the Samarensis. You can really see the different texture of the branches, as well as how fused the Ultercepta is. And I think it's time to go back to some scrolling or whirling Montipora. And no, not every scrolling or whirling Montipora is Montipora capricornis. You can see here there's two different species growing on top of this parietes. 
On the last video, I spoke a little bit about Montipora aquid tuberculata, but we're gonna dive into it a bit deeper here. The corallites can either be inside or they can sort of be pushed out and they're surrounded by these things called fecal papillae, which are basically like little nipple-like structures that stick up. Now, around the edges of this Montipora, you can actually see them line up and it creates these ridge lines. And if you look real close around these colonies, you'll see the ridges down the edge and the perimeter of the colony. The edges of the plates or the whorls are actually split and create these like florets which basically scroll out and create new whorls and plates that grow upwards towards the sun. If you ever see this coral in the hobby, it's probably going to be mislabeled as a Montipora cap, but if you look at those thecal papillae, they're a dead giveaway for this species and super cool to recognise in your tanks. Speaking of Montipora Capricornus, here it is. Well, at least I think it is. It's very hard to ID and it's actually a little bit rarer than you think. It doesn't have any papillae or anything like that, but you can see the plates are thick and it's still that coarse texture across its body. And this creamy brownie colored one is also Montipora Capricornus. And the side-by-side -side comparison really gives you a good idea of how it actually looks. And check out this blue scroller or plater, whatever you want to call it. This is Montipora friabilis. I found this at a surf break and it kind of looks like it's melting over the rocks. And here's a green one for comparison. You can kind of see that the polyps are really immersed, but you can see that they're out during the day. There are all those little brown dots all over that green colony. And this next one, I really don't know. So what do you think? It's a nice dark green color with a, a lighter rim around it. If I had to guess, I'd say Montipora delicatula, mainly based on the ridges that you see radiating out from the center of the colony. So what you can see is actually there is so much variation in Montipora, not just in different species, but also within groups where there's scrolling, whirling, plating, crusting, there's so much variation. This species right here, again, is another species of scrolling or whirling type of Montipora. It's Montipora hodgsoni. The colony is covered in ridges and bumps, and these are pretty irregular, except they do run perpendicular to the edge of the colony. Moving away from scrollers, we have a thick plating Montipora of Fusa here. Really cool one to find in at about 20 meters deep. And those thick plates really look awesome with all the polyps out like that. This is Montipora efflorescens, and you can see the papillae covering this one. Really good example because they're really elongated and colored blue. And I've also got some more Montipora Danae to show you. Instead of papillae, these guys are covered in vuricae, which are the large dome-like structures you see covering this entire colony. These are stunning and they come in so many different color ranges. Usually the base color is different to the polyp color, which really gives it an awesome contrast. And I think what will surprise a lot of people is this coral tends to be a little bit more common than what you might think. I tend to find them on the shallow reef edges or up high and the 10 meter mark. I found this awesome representation of the species. I mean, look at the yellowy orangey color. This one would be stunning under blue and I would love to see or hear if you guys have anything like this. Very similar to the Danae, you've got the Montipora vericulosis. They form thick horizontal plates up to two meters across. They are also covered in vericae, but they don't line up until the very perimeter of the plate. For this next one, I'm hopefully gonna be able to film a lot more of this. This is Montipora cebuensis and it's rare for me, so let's hope I get some more footage in the future. Now let's look at some encrusting wild Montipora. Check out this purple with green polyp Montipora I found in less than two meters of water in Bali. I believe it's Montipora grizzia, but it is so hard to film in this shallow of water. I was literally crawling along the rocks, making sure I wasn't breaking any coral. So if you think it's something else, let me know. Another Montipora grizzia, this one was a little bit deeper, but it was bright orange, which was awesome and stood out from the very top when I was snorkeling. Encrusted Montipora, like Montipora grizzia, give you so much variation in color. And here's a nice red one that I found while snorkeling in Bali. This next one, I'm not too sure on, but I'm pretty sure it's Montipora nodosa. How crazy is it to think that this is its real color and this is what it looks like in the ocean? The next clip, this is Montipora parietes. They have these sunken polyps. It's a very short clip, but there it is, weird name. Another short one is this Montipora foveolata. It gets its name because its polyps are like funnel shapes and you can see how they sort of sink into the coral colony. And I realize I didn't add this one to the last one, but this is Montipora peltiformis. If you want to see more about this one, go back to the other video, but I just could not resist putting this in. On this reef, you can kind of see it's dominated by encrusting species of coral, in particular Montipora, and this purple one really stood out to me. 
I don't know exactly the species. Let me know if you think you know and check out how much encrusting Montipora there is all over this reef. This purple one looks real similar, but it's actually Montipora turgescens, which has coralites that are immersed into the coral skeleton. You can also see it's quite moundy and it's because it lives in high energy areas with heaps of waves. And sorry, I'm not able to ID this one as well, but it could be the same as the last one, or it could also be a mollusk. It doesn't really fit any of it, but it was just too purple and too cool not to add. And sticking to the theme of not knowing, I'm sorry, some of these things are very hard to ID, but this orangey pale colony is just too good not to include. So let me know what you think it is. If you'd like this video and you also want to see other stuff, let me know what you want to see. We've also done fish, coral, and other things you find in the ocean already. I'll throw some videos up on screen now. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and follow along for this journey in the oceans. You never know what I'm going to be able to show and I never know what I'm going to find. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I'll catch you next time.